So we just finished watching Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. And we decided that we wanted to talk about it. Because honestly, what isn't to talk about in that movie? <laughs> Go. This is one of my most favorite movies in the whole wide world, just because it is balls to the wall insane. Um, it has everything you could ever dream about in a movie. It has Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman as an old vampire. Gary Oldman as a bat vampire. Gary Oldman as a hot vampire. Gary Oldman as a werewolf. It's here! <laughs> <laughs> it also has Anthony Hopkins, Keanu Reeves, Winona Ryder. Um, Carrie Ellis Wesley from uh, Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. <laughs> um, basically what this movie does is it takes the story of Dracula and tries to explain it. Like, the reason that Dracula goes after Mina isn't just because he wants revenge on Jonathan Harker. Oh no, Mina is the reincarnation of his long lost love, his soulmate. So you get one of the most random ass love stories you have ever come across in a movie. And it's horrible, but I love it. It's better than Twilight. That's what I could say about that. And I mean, on like in a love story, I don't know, one that like love across like thousands of years slash soulmates who can never quite ever be together is probably one of my favorite love stories of all time. You can find it in a few places, but so I was watching and I'm like, this is a really, really weird movie, but I'm like, I kind of like it. <laughs> well, as I said to you, it's kind of like it's a really, really good, interesting premise buried under a whole bunch of random shit. Like, I feel like the director suddenly discovered how to overlay shit on the movie, so you get the most crazy transitions you've ever seen. And, like, there's, like, one point where it's, like, Mina, and it, like, descends into a peacock feather, and then the eye of the peacock feather opens onto, like, Dracula, and you're like, what? What does this have to do with anything? They would probably lose about 20 to 30 minutes of the runtime if they like cut down <laughs> on all their random transitions. And then you just have like overlays of Jonathan's face and then you've got a letter over a train and you're like... My favorite, <sighs> my favorite like cut through is the camera goes on to Lucy's neck where like the vampire fight oh, is. Yeah, and yeah. The, two, the two holes end up becoming the eyes of a wolf. <laughs> It's just like, they just had a lot of fun with it. And the part that got me and had me dying was Lucy's wedding dress. It was like, she was a clown queen of hearts <laughs> flapper thing. It was like the worst costume I have ever seen in my life. She had a ruffle out to here. And then they buried her in it. I was like, oh god, like, can she die with some kind of dignity, please? It was a glass coffin, too! Like, ah! I have to say, some of the other costuming is actually quite lovely. I really like what Mina wears for the majority of the movie. I kind of dig the, the old school scary weird hair out to hear long ponytail and robes that they have Gary Oldman in when you first meet Dracula because you just kind of, they've, they've like powdered his face to the point where you can't tell where his hair starts and his face <laughs> begins. Uh, I mean, there are some weird things. It's kind of, okay, this movie is very interesting in the fact that in some ways, it is to the book, but then they take details, and the more they go into it, the less it's like the book. Like, the plot events are there, but they've added a whole bunch of other crap that's, like, just not in the book. So, that's kind of why it's so interesting, is because you're like, it's there, but they've just taken the interpretation and went that way. <laughs> like... And from like, a, a, you were talking about how you had read a, an article or you had heard of an article about how it's tied to, there's a reading of it for like sexually transmitted diseases. And yeah. then there, there's... If there's a lot of scholarship, I think, on this Oh my movie. god, yes. You have your STIs and STDs. You have your um, mm. feminist interpretations, which... <laughs> this movie can, like, you can read this movie as, like... Whatever you want. Positive and negative. Because you have the whole, I really, the whole Mina Harker, or 
Mina Murray or whatever we want to call her at this point, she kind of escapes the system and Dracula is her escape from the system. But at the same time, you have the uh, the group of men, men. trying to like s uh, separate her from her love, wh who she clearly wants to be with. And they ultimately, I guess, fail at the end because they're just like, oh, well, let her go. Yeah, Jonathan's but... just like, all right, she's got a job to do. And you're like, yeah, because Jonathan Harper is so boring. He really doesn't have a part in this movie. Like, you could almost cut him out and... Basically, he exists to be quiet and kind of mumbly and then to be captured by Dracula and just kind of be tortured off screen <laughs> for the entire movie and then come back with white hair. Oh. Ugh. Just so good. Just oh, and hits you right there. The special effects were so cheesy at some point and then they were pretty good at other points. It was like a weird mashup of just... You can see budget. where the money went. Yeah, you can. You can see exactly where the money went. And uh, that's interesting in itself. So that makes it laughable at a lot of points. And I thought it was interesting that they incorporated a lot of like the letters and stuff um, to kind of help explain the story. Was it well done? No, but it was like an interesting throwback to Dracula. It was like they were trying. They tried. They tried. <laughs> um, there's a lot of this movie that we can't actually show you clips of because... They played up the sexuality oh, a lot. Oh boy. There are, like, <laughs> there's... If you actually just probably Google search memorable scenes from Bram Stoker's Dracula by Francis Ford Coppola, there is a list and you just... <laughs> The werewolf scene. That is all I'm going to say. So basically what happened was we were writing our eye Dracula review and you had never seen this movie and I kept saying, oh, we can use the scene from this part and this scene. And you were like, oh, I've never seen it. And I'm like, you have to watch this movie. So we sat down and we watched it. And what were your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it was really weird, kind of good, and then really bad, and kind of weird. <laughs> it just kind of rides the, the so bad it's good line, just like from the from the get-go to the end. It's just right there. <laughs> it is memorable. If you want to laugh, watch it. Definitely. Um. Show it to all of your friends. <laughs> it was made in 1992, so if that tells you anything, that's what it tells you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was our little vlog on watching Bram Stoker's Dracula by Francis Ford Coppola. We enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> and uh, if you're fixing for a vampire movie that's a little offbeat, this would be your movie. So if you go and watch it, please tell us what you think. Tell us what your favorite part is because there are so many. This movie is so quotable. Like. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.